Like the title of the video says, we are going to be covering Nazar's second ability, Blazing Chakram. Now, Blazing Chakram has a lot of stuff going on, so this will probably be a longer than normal video, even for me. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into the card to kind of get an overview of what this thing says it does. Um, so, hurl a flaming ring that sets enemies ablaze, making them vulnerable to any damage. Uh, flaming enemies drop restorative orbs on death charge the glaive attack this is similar to other glaive attacks that you have with normal weapons um, but you charge it to amplify the power of the ring and reactivate to instantly travel to the ring's location so um, setting some some ground rules here some setup this is sort of like a weapon this is kind of like a normal glaive attack except it's an ability however um, it doesn't actually count as an exalted weapon you can't modify it in any way um, it's just a normal throne uh, ability now that being said it's very far from normal so let's let's just go over some of the descriptors here uh, you you hurl a flaming ring that sets enemies ablaze making them vulnerable to any damage now there's actually two parts to that and that is the fact that it has a 100 percent heat status chance that does make armored enemies more vulnerable but that isn't even what it means here so you will always set enemies on fire when you hit with this ability however there is an additional effect when you hit an enemy and it'll be kind of like a, a visual of like a ring going up and down almost like a teleporter kind of thing and it will cause them to take a hundred percent increased damage as you can see on the uh, on the card down there damage vulnerability a hundred percent it's going to be kind of hard to test that at least against armored enemies because you are going to have the variable of the heat proc occurring at the same time now, flaming enemies drop restorative orbs on death. So basically, if an enemy is on fire when you kill them, when they have this debuff on them, they will drop extra restorative orbs. Now, what are the chances for these orbs? So health orbs drop at a 100% chance and energy orbs drop at a 35% chance. These cannot be increased. So it will always be 100% and 35% um, barring an augment, which we'll talk about later. Um, so we already see that this thing has um, some damage capabilities. Um, it's outright damage of the skill itself isn't super great. As you can see down there, it's 250. Um, it's boosted damage is a thousand. Um, so it, it's not a super big um, burst of damage, but it isn't horrific. However, between the heat proc and the damage vulnerability, it is going to allow us to set up other weapons or possibly other abilities to deal a lot more damage than normal. Um, Finally, we have the ability to reactivate to instantly travel to the ring's location, as you see in the picture playing there. So this is a great mobility skill. So let's look at the skill itself now, um, just so we don't sit in the card all day. Um, so effectively, whenever you cast it, you're going to use 25 energy, like so. Now, that being said, if you, uh, if you use it again... If you tap the button again, you will teleport to wherever the glaive is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and you're going to see that we still use 25 energy. So the, the back end, the teleport portion of the skill, doesn't actually consume any energy. So don't really feel bad for, at least in terms of energy conservation, for using the teleport functionality. Now, this isn't as apparent, but if you ever throw the glaive out, it will travel a certain distance and then come back. This cannot be scaled with ability range or duration or anything like that. However, if we throw it out, you'll see it travels about there. If you bounce it off the ground, you'll notice it goes much further. Whenever this thing bounces, it'll actually reset the duration that it can move. So it goes much, much further if you're bouncing it off of surfaces. Let me see if I can get this to, to go. Now it does have a maximum number of bounces and we'll kind of get into that a little bit when we get to enemies as well. Um, so let's go ahead and spawn some enemies over here and we're gonna see what this thing does by default. Um, so by default, it has the ability to bounce between five enemies. It can hit five enemies per throw. Now it does have the standard really bad glaive logic though. Um, so if you've ever used a glaive, you know that these things are in general not very reliable to bounce around. So it can hit five. Let's see how many it hits. It hit two and then flew way over there for some reason. And you'll see that they have this ring going up and down them. And they also had heat procs at the beginning. So 
that damage over um, that damage vulnerability that they get from the uh, from the uh, ability that little ring that's bouncing up and down that does affect dots so the dots you actually see ticking from the heat are improved by that vulnerability but it will also improve the next throw against it as well so if you keep throwing not only is the heat proc going to lower their armor but it's also going to make them more vulnerable because of the uh, damage vulnerability. Now that being said, it doesn't have a double dipping effect. Um, so this is going to be kind of complicated, but somewhat important, um, at least if you're trying to min-max the skill or the character. And that is the fact that if you, say, put ability strength on this skill, it will actually, in a way, double dip. Um, the way it will double dip is when you throw it, the glaive will hit harder. That makes sense. Its base damage goes up. However, the vulnerability portion also improves as you put ability strength on the character. And as I just said, the ability vulnerability, uh, or the damage vulnerability from the ability, um, improves dot damage. However, if you have a souped up hit from a glaive that hits a target that has the debuff on them, it will actually not produce a stronger dot. It will be the same level of dot. Um, so that dot is going to be based on the quote unquote base damage of the glaive, and it won't be double dipping into that vulnerability. So that is kind of an interesting distinction because certain characters like I think Bobbin ends up double dipping into some of these kinds of things. But it does make it to where um, the skill kind of feeds itself and really honestly if you're using this as a dps skill like as a glaive weapon itself the biggest problem that you're going to see with it is the fact that it is just not reliable hit two enemies flew over there flew back over there and then back into my hands so you're very rarely going to see it hit five people um and these are kind of still so it's a little different than a normal test but um it's just not reliable now if this thing always hit five enemies or even bounced around to more enemies or lasted a duration or something it would be a lot lot better um, but for now you're really never going to be using this skill outright for its quote unquote damage capabilities you're going to be using it to apply the damage debuff you're going to be using it to teleport you're going to be using it to make enemies drop extra health orbs or energy orbs and things of that nature so just keep in mind this skill is not an outright dps skill by default and it's pretty difficult to make it that way at least at high levels now at low levels remember at low levels everything in the game works it's a terrible place to kind of talk about balance or anything like that because it doesn't matter. You can walk around with the worst weapon in the game and one shot everything. Um, so just keep in mind, whenever I talk, I'm going to be talking about steel path levels of stuff. Or if I'm not, um, as a generality, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll usually say, oh, this is going to be good around level 60 or or whatever it is so this thing definitely falls off in the 50s and 60s and at level 100 in terms of outright damage potential it's just not gonna be there so um, we see that the damage vulnerability is actually a very strong side effect the fact that enemies will drop additional orbs and energy orbs is actually really helpful too that scales with all sorts of mods and operator forms and um, all, all sorts of things arcanes so there, there's a lot of synergy that you can actually put on Neza for his ability to generate orbs. Now, that's sort of going to be the, the base covering of the skill. Let's talk about stats. Well, what, what stats do we have here? We have, uh, we have efficiency. Um, sure, ability efficiency lets us uh, cast this thing for less energy. That obviously works. Um, duration. Duration's a little harder. Um, so duration doesn't seem to affect the heat proc, um, which I definitely think it should not. Like that wouldn't make any sense because the heat proc's heat proc. Um, so it doesn't actually affect the heat proc. Um, it does affect, if you see that 15 seconds down there, it affects the amount of time an enemy has their damage vulnerability on them. Um, so if you do have duration in your build, it will improve the amount of time that the enemy is vulnerable from getting hit by this. Now this vulnerability applies to all types of enemies, even if they're invulnerable, pretty much pretty much most, if not every type from what I've seen. Um, so it's a very, very good skill in general to have around. Um, 
Um, other than that, though, um, there is no discernible real value to have out of duration. It doesn't improve how far you can throw the chakram. It doesn't improve um, how many balances it gets. It doesn't. It doesn't really do anything other than the debuff duration. Um, now, range also doesn't technically really help here. Um, however, we're going to talk about the augment in a minute here, um, or at least an augment that goes with a different skill, but technically it also affects the skill. So in any case, um, range does technically help a little bit here, but for the base ability, range doesn't really do anything. So range is kind of bad for this skill. Um, but finally, we have strength. Strength is huge for this skill. So what does strength do? Well, A, it improves the damage and the boosted damage. That, that boosted damage, and I should have showed this earlier, um, you have the ability to throw the chakram with a charge ability. So if you hold it down, you will throw it in a straight line. Um, let me go ahead and come over here. Um, you'll notice here when I throw it, right here, if I charge it up and throw it, it does seem to go a little bit faster and therefore it ends up a little bit further. Um, it does maintain all of the base capabilities, so it can also, oops, I didn't mean to do it that way. Um, so if I charge it up and throw it, you'll see that it doesn't actually bounce off of things. It just returns to you, um, but it keeps all the other profiles. So if I hit an enemy, hopefully he doesn't fall off. You will see that he has a heat proc and he has the debuff on him. He will also drop extra energy orbs and things like that. Um, however, it will not actually bounce off of, you know, surfaces effectively. Um, so if you're trying to get the maximum distance, usually for a teleport, it's better to throw it as a light and then let it bounce further to get that maximum range teleport. So sorry we got kind of sidetracked. Um, that should have been a little bit earlier, but getting back to the stats sorry about that our damage vulnerability amount is increased by strength that is huge that is huge this damage vulnerability is a very very powerful skill it's a very powerful debuff on an enemy and the fact that we can put strength on it means we can make an enemy take way way more damage now the exact amount more damage isn't as clear cut as just 100 percent more damage um, because of the way warframe works and where this goes in the formula sometimes it's going to be a little weird um, like for instance whenever you use it on the chakram throw itself it goes into the heat modifier um, portion for status effects so in terms of a status effect it's going to go in the status uh, or the element type modifier as opposed to just an outright times two on the end of the total formula so just keep in mind you may end up seeing kind of weird results um, depending on the situation but it is a very very powerful powerful effect effect nonetheless sorry about that i need to take a drink of water um <clears throat> so Beyond the normal skill and the stats, we've kind of covered all of the stats, let's now talk about augments. So we're actually going to be talking about two augments. Um, so right here we have Reaping Chakram and we have Pyroclastic uh, Flow. So the Firewalker augment accumulates 150% of the damage from Firewalker um, that it deals, unleashing it in a trail of fire that lasts 10 seconds. Um, so in addition, though, um, we have the ability that whenever we are... Uh, Whenever we are fire walking, whenever we teleport to the disc, you'll actually see an explosion occur. And as you can see there, we have a ring of fire. Um, so let's go ahead and do that over here, just so we can kind of see what's going on. And you're gonna see these enemies are in a ring of fire. Um, you can see that we are getting a, uh, a proc for our pyroclastic flow up there. Um, so let me go ahead and kick it over here just so we can stop that use it again now this time I'm not actually going to move from this spot so I have drawn out a circle um, and we have an enemy that I'm kind of standing on I really didn't mean to do it that way um, but you can see that the ring itself seems to add the bonus to our pyroclastic flow however the explosion doesn't seem to so even though I hit those enemies, you saw our 66 didn't change. And because this ring is up in the air, we're not getting any of that burn. So it's a little funky, but just know that the the circle left on the ground from your teleportation should affect pyroclastic flow. Um, we'll do one more test just to, to ensure that. 
I'm gonna go over here, teleport. Oh, I was I didn't have firewalker on, I'm sorry. Let's try it again. So right there. And we can see very clearly that the number is going up, even though, you know, I'm pretty far away from them. That guy in the back is getting hit. So the circle itself works, the explosion doesn't. So um, I kind of wanted to wait until covering it um, completely for that skill because we did have a synergy going on. Um, one other thing to note is that strength doesn't technically double dip into pyroclastic flow. Um, and that is because 150% of the damage dealt by firewalker, that 150% doesn't scale up from strength. So that doesn't go up to 200 or 300% strength if we have more. However, the base damage that Firewalker does, does increase. So it does scale from ability strength, it just doesn't sort of double dip from it, um, if that makes sense. So jumping into Reaping Chakram, we have Blazing Chakram Augment. Each enemy hit increases the ring's damage by two times and the chance for enemies to drop health orbs on death by 0.25. So what does that mean? So our chance to drop health orbs is already 100%. So this actually has the ability to drop multiple orbs. Now, the interesting thing about this is, and it's not just for this, it's actually for the base ability, it isn't necessarily a binary choice between health or energy. You can actually have an en enemy drop health and energy. They are separate roles. Um, so that means you have a chance to proc an energy orb and you have a chance to drop two, um, sometimes maybe even three health orbs. And that's because there is actually a synergy with another ability that we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, and this is a little unusual because normally I'd wait for that other ability. Um, but there's already so much going on with the skill that I really want to get it all encapsulated in a video. So Reaping Chakra, each enemy hit increases the ring's damage by two times and increases the health orb, orb drop rate. So the health orb drop rate is fairly straightforward. Every time you hit an enemy, it just goes up by a 25% chance. So first enemy is 125% chance, second one is 150, 175, so on and so forth. The times two is actually really, really cool because uh, the way it works, and you guys should be able to slow this down if you need to, um, hopefully we can just see it but the damage is actually multiplicative with itself. So whenever we hit an enemy, you're gonna see that damage get multiplied times two, and then that damage is multiplied by times two. So effectively, instead of being like one, two, three, four, we're gonna see one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's compounding damage increase. So in that factor, it's actually really, really good. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. Um, so you're going to see it do, I think it was 11 and then it did 21 and then I didn't see the third one. We're going to wait for all of these buffs to kind of fall off. Hopefully I can hit these guys. Um, so here, 21, 43. So it was 11, 21, and 43. So it is doubling every single time you hit an enemy. This is insanely good. If this thing was actually based on a weapon that had good AI or programming type because glaives are just so bad, like if glaives always hit enemies, this thing would be amazing. Not just for ju not just for all of the other reasons, but its damage output would actually be somewhat good. And that is because of the synergy we have with another ability here. Um, so normally I don't do things out of order, and I won't even speak to exactly what it is, but whenever you use your ult as Naza, you'll put enemies on spikes. If you hit an enemy that is on a spike with the glaive, you'll actually see all of the glaives multiply. So how does it work? Well, effectively for every enemy that you hit, the glaive will split into two. These also can split into two, which also can split into two. So what does that mean? Well, effectively what that means for this skill in its current state is that if you have eight enemies piled up, we have a maximum possibility of hitting five enemies. But is that really true? Not really. If we're, if we're being honest here, we're going to hit two enemies and it's going to fly off into nowhere and come back. So what does that mean if you have spiked them? Well, if I spiked them, it's going to hit one and turn into three and it'll go and hit two and that one will turn into three. Um, so we're going to hit probably six people, maybe 12, and then they're going to fly off into nowhere. Um, eventually, there's some sort of cap with this thing. 
right? Just because the way glaives work. So let's go ahead and do it again. And you're gonna see that it doesn't seem to do that well. Let's try it again. And we saw, we, we got a lot more that time. So that was maybe 10 of them. I'm gonna need some more energy here in a second. But you can very, very clearly see that if this ability, if the glaives themselves had better AI, this thing would multiply into insane numbers. See, that wasn't that good of a bounce. So this thing jumping around isn't going to hit that many times. We would expect to see it a lot more. And you can actually already see that we've kind of whittled down their health, right? So, and this, this is actually a really good way to test this. Let's go ahead and do it one more time. Hopefully I can get enough energy here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spike them up and I'm going to throw it. We're just going to look and see how many heat procs we get because it's a hundred percent chance. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, so we've got five hits, six hits, four hits. That guy had two hits, two hits. So it looks like the guys at the beginning got fewer. The guys in the middle got more. Um, that makes a little bit of sense just, you know, probability wise. Um, but I think the skill could be absolutely bonkers good for just damage if glaives worked better. Um, but I think that's going to cover it for basically everything that blazing chakram is down from its stats from how it works overall um and also how its augments work um before i actually conclude i'm sorry i should have done this before um let's go ahead and do one final test i'm sorry about this guys and that is the charged throw so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this right here and then i'm going to do a charged throw through them so you're going to see that that wasn't nearly as effective as it probably should have been. I don't know exactly why this is, but my guess is that these things have a punch through amount. And because these enemies are kind of exceeding that punch through fairly easily, that distance, it's not able to punch through them just because of the way they get picked up. Now, if you look at some enemies like Bobbin's Bastille and stuff like that, they'll literally get picked up completely vertically. Uh, but because of the skill being horizontal, and the fact that they're laid across here, it makes the skill really bad at penetrating. Now you can see we did get a split there. We did get some splits. They, they went all over the place. But in general, you're not going to be able to get really good charge throw results. Um, but like I was uh, starting to say earlier, um, I think that's going to conclude it for the skill. As always, if I missed anything or misrepresented anything, let me know in the comment section below. This is especially important for this skill just because it has so much going on and I may have missed or misrepresented or just outright forgotten something. So, you know, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, again, thanks for watching, guys.